Hi friends, welcome to Curious Wit. I'm Dr. Mohsina. In today's video, we will see the second mycotic condition, blastomycosis. So in the last video, we discussed about histoplasmosis. So I told you that in the upcoming videos, we will discuss about systemic mycotic condition. So in today's video, we will see blastomycosis, a multifocal fungal infection caused by the dimorphic fungus Blastomyces dermatitis. The fungus is often found in soil or decomposing organic matter such as leaves and infection is characterized by pyogranulomatous lesion in various tissues character frequently the lung or skin. Blastomycosis affects some species but not others. Most commonly affected are human, dog and cat and less commonly uh, diagnosed in horses, ferrets etc. and not reported to be susceptible are cattle, sheep and pigs. And blastomycosis sometimes called blasto is generally limited to North America. Most cases have occurred in river basins like Mississippi, Missouri, Tennessee and Ohio, Great Lakes and San Lawrence Seaway. There is an endemic area in the Pacific Northwest, even within these river basins, organisms is found in geographically restricted areas, especially in beaver dams and other habitats, where soil is moist, acidic and rich in decaying vegetation. And the organism has also been recovered from pigeon and bat feces. Rain, dew or fog may play a critical role in liberating the infective conidia which then are aerolyzed and inhaled by the organism like shown in this picture and uh, from the lung the organism can disseminate to a variety of tissues but especially the eye, lymph nodes, skin and bones. When respiratory defenses are overwhelmed or immunosuppressed, disseminated disease occurs via hematogenous spread from the lungs. Cutaneous lesions may result from a primary entry through the skin or more commonly by dissemination from <coughs> pulmonary focus and needle stick injuries to veterinary personnel after aspiration of cutaneous lesion from infected animals have resulted in primary cutaneous infection. Ocular lesions tend to develop first in the posterior segment resulting in granulomatous chorioretinitis and retinal detachment. This is active chorioretinitis in cat. The normally transparent retina becomes infiltrated with edema, inflammatory exudates and cells appearing as raised translucent or cloudy areas. And this lesion is also seen with histoplasmosis that is chorioretinitis. Both active and inactive chorioretinitis so, uh, seen in a dog with systemic blastomycosis. A gray area next to optic nerve head is the active and inactive area is the black area in the central tapetal fundus. This is chorioretinitis in a hunting dog affected with testicular blastomycosis. Then bilateral retinal detachment in a dog with advanced renal disease and aggressive IV fluid therapy with reduced fluid therapy both retinal detach detachments are reattached so you can see the detached retina and the large hole left over from the detached retina and a vitreous hemorrhage also can be seen in the picture below anterior segment involvement often follows resulting in anterior uveitis and panophthalmitis
So this is another picture of acute anterior uveitis in a cat. Aqueous flare and cell are observed with fibrin admixed with blood and white cells in the ventral anterior chamber in the right eye of a cat. This is pan of thalmitis that is a purulent inflammation of all parts of the eye and often arises when endophthalmitis extends into cornea and sclera. Now coming to the signs and symptoms of blastomycosis, signs vary with the organ involved and are not specific like weight loss, cough, anorexia, lymphadenopathy, dyspnea, ocular disease, lameness, skin lesions and fever. Dry harsh lung sounds from lung lesions are common in dogs with blastomycosis and signs of pulmonary involvement are seen in as many as 85% of affected dogs. So signs of pulmonary involvement are very prominent in dogs. Severe pulmonary involvement results in hypoxemia which indicate a poor prognosis and lymph node involvement is seen in approximately half of the affected dogs which is about the same proportion of dogs that have cutaneous involvement. So in dogs the systems mainly affected as the respiratory then the skin and also there is lymph node involvement. Radiograph of thoracic blastomycosis in a dog you can see the radiographic pattern. This is radiographic patterns in pulmonary blastomycosis. In the picture A, you will see the lateral radio, thoracic radiograph from a two-year-old female spade labrador retriever with one-week history of cough and inhabitants. Diffuse miliary nodular interstitial pattern is present. And second one is another dog presented with lethargy and inhabitants. Alveolar pattern is present in the caudal lung lobes along with marked hilar lymphadenopathy. So skin lesions may include uh, so next we will see about the skin lesions. Skin lesions may include proliferative granulomas and subcutaneous abscesses that ulcerate and drain a serous discharge. Skin lesions are often very small and multifocal in dogs but large abscesses are occasionally seen in cats and plenum nasal face and nail buds are most often affected. And now coming to the disseminated blastomycosis in a labrador retriever. You can see in these pictures nodular cutaneous lesions present on muscle and there is multiple ulcerated and draining skin lesions on distal limbs and digit. These are the cutaneous forms. Cutaneous lesions in a cat with disseminated blastomycosis that involves the foot pads, inner digital folds and lips. So in the lung use we saw the alveolar pattern and uh, now the cutaneous lesions in both dog and cat. Signs of ocular blastomycosis are seen in 30 to 50 percentage of affected dogs and include blindness, uveitis, glaucoma and retinal detachment, lameness associated with fungal osteomyelitis or severe paronychia occurs in approximately one quarter or of, of affected dogs. So, in 25% of affected dogs, we will see uh, the lameness caused by uh, bone affection. Then CNS signs are, are uncommon, occurring in less than 5% of dogs, but they may be more common in cats. The pattern of systemic involvement is similar in cats, but cats are affected far less commonly than dogs. Hematuria and dysuria may be seen with urogenital blastomycosis. 
Now, now coming to the postmortem lesions. Gross lesions consist of few to numerous variable sized irregular firm gray to yellow areas of pulmonary consolidation and nodules in the lungs and thoracic lymph nodes. Dissemination may result in nodular lesions in various organs, especially skin, eye, and bone. And cutaneous lesions are single or multiple papules or chronic draining nodular pyogranulomas. Nodular and ulcerated lesions of tongue in a dog with disseminated blastomycosis are seen here. Now this is another bone affection. That is lateral A and uh, anteropama radiograph of right carpus showing osteolytic and osteoproductive lesion with pathologic fracture and associated soft tissue swelling in the distal radius of a labrador retriever with disseminated blastomycosis. Coming to the diagnosis, blastomycosis should be considered in dogs with draining cutaneous nodules and signs of respiratory disease. And in cats, respiratory tract involvement is seen most frequently, followed by involvement of CNS, regional lymph nodes, skin, eyes, GI and urinary tract. So in dogs, it is mainly a respiratory and cutaneous form. Then radiographic findings in the lungs include non-calcified nodules or consolidation with enlargement of bronchial and mediastinal lymph node like we seen before. The predominant pattern on thoracic radiograph are diffuse nodular interstitial and peribronchial densities. Commonly the bronchial lymph nodes are gen gen greatly enlarged and appear in radiograph as dense masses. Diagnosis can be made from biopsy of tissue or aspirated specimens taken from cutaneous lesions or other involved organs by the presence of thick walled yeast that often have daughter cells budding from a broad base. So this is a thick walled yeast and have budding daughter cells from the broad base as you see in this picture. These round to avoid pale pink uh, stained by H and D blastospores, measure 8 to 25 micrometer and have a refractile double contour wall. They may be empty the, or contain basophilic nuclear material and have single broad base buds. So, single broad base buds are the peculiar feature of this uh, spore with double contour wall. Cytology of a fine needle aspirate of skin lesion from the dog with blastomycosis. Blastomyces yeast shown by arrow have a thick wall and exhibit broad base budding so thick wall and broad base budding are the peculiar feature pyogranulomatous inflammatory response is also present in this picture an antibody response detected by agar gel immunodiffusion usually occurs but this response is neither sensitive nor specific when attempting to make a definitive diagnosis an Im enzyme immunoassay for antibodies to our uh, BAD1 repeat has shown improved sensitivity than agar gel immunodiffusion. A recently developed antigen Im uh, enzyme immunoassay has been used in both serum and urine to detect cell wall galactoman and that is immunologically indistinguishable in histoplasmosis and blastomycosis. Although the titrate is not useful in differentiating between the two infections, it helps diagnose the presence of one of these two systemic mycosis. Coming to the treatment, itraconazole 5 mg per kilogram per day is the treatment of choice for dogs and cats with blastomycosis. A minimum of 2 months of treatment is necessary and the drug should be continued until active disease is not apparent. Clinical cure can be expected in approximately 70% of dogs with recurrence months or years after treatment noted in, up in almost 20% of treated dogs. Most dogs will respond to retreatment with itraconazole in the recurrence.
other assault such as fluconazole or and ketoconazole are not as effective as etraconazole but a study evaluating cost effectiveness of fluconazole showed it uh, showed it to be a less expensive alternative despite longer treatment times so etraconazole is the drug of choice but it requires longer treatment for two months in fulminating cases of blastomycosis especially those with evidence of hypoxemia combination therapy with amphotericin b and etraconazole is recommended short courses of anti-inflammatory dosages of glucocorticoids have been advocated during the first few days of treatment by some but steroid use is controversial and may actually worsen the prognosis Now coming to the prognosis, it is best for dogs with only mild lung disease and guarded for dogs with moderate to severe lung disease and poorest for dogs with CNS involvement. So that's all about the second mycotic condition that we discussed that is blastomycosis. And in the coming videos, we will see other type of uh, systemic uh, mycosis. So, uh, mostly in the next video, we will discuss about cryptococcosis. So, if you like the video, please like it and share it with your friends. If you have any suggestions or uh, uh, anything to communicate with me, please comment. And if you are new to this channel and has not subscribed yet, please subscribe and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. See you soon with another video. Thank you.